Dick. Uh, right now, I'd like to uh, introduce a special guest. John Katsimatidis is joining us. He is uh, a, a, a business leader as well as a sometime candidate for, uh, for public office and the host of a fabulous podcast. John Katsimatidis, thank you for joining us. Uh, thank you for having me on, Earl, and always good to see you. Yes, you too. I'm, I know you'd, you'd have uh, looked forward to uh, flying down and participating in all of the convention events for the high rollers like yourself. Uh, th that, that wasn't possible this time. However, a lot of convention business still does get done. What's your sense of where the party's going to be uh, when the sun comes up tomorrow and this convention is in the books? Uh, I think they've been a very successful convention. Uh, uh, I think they've asked... Uh, they offer a lot of hope on uh, uh, getting uh, the economy uh, going again. Uh, we don't forget we had the best economy in the world. We had the safest streets in the world. Uh, Earl, look what happened in New York in the last uh, uh, three, four months. Uh, we're competing with Chicago on murders. Uh, we had the safest city in the world. We had the best city in the world. Now. It looks like politics has taken over, Earl. Uh, it's just the pot is being stirred, and I'm very much disturbed. I am concerned for New York City right now, and I, you know, I love New York City, and you know, I love New York City. Uh, I'm concerned for our inner city kids. You know, uh, I've worked for Police Athletic League for 34 years, and now we have let the criminals on the streets. We emptied out Rikers Island, put those criminals on the streets, and they're going into Harlem, they're going into Bedford-Stuyvesant, trying to get those kids uh, working with them, uh, turning them into criminals. So uh, um, I think this election in November is all about which America do you want to live in? You want to live in an America that uh, uh, is not going to respect our police force, uh, that's uh, that just going to have violence, that we're going to handcuff our uh, police officers versus handcuffing the criminals. Well, but here, but you, you know, but, but you know Mr. New York Cassidy, could be cleaned let me, up let me in ask you this. I, you, you've you've run you've run for, uh, for for mayor, and you know a lot of these issues are are at the local level. Uh, where does the president fit into this? Because all of these horrible things that you're you're describing, and you know, you and I might differ a little bit on uh, whether or not Rikers should be downsized or closed and so forth. But uh, all, all of these problems, whatever they may be, happened while Donald Trump was in the White House. What what does that mean? I mean, if, if all of this happened while he was there, what's going to happen in the next four uh, years? I'm concerned. I'm concerned that I watch the Democratic convention. I watched it every day that nobody said uh, uh, boo about how bad things are in our cities. We have 20 big cities in, in, in our country that you have uh, nothing but crime and the citizens are, don't even feel safe on uh, walking around. Now, does that mean mm -hmm. if the Democratic Party doesn't have the, the courage, and I am pro common sense Democrats, I have given uh, mm -hmm. contributions to pro common sense Democrats. I am pro common sense Republicans, but you need common sense. You can't just uh, uh, let things go rampant, uh, and uh, that's what's happening. So the concern is, if Joe Biden is president, will he have the courage to stand up uh, to, to these crazies and say, "Enough is enough, guys." Well, what would you what would you say to um, President Trump? I mean, you're 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 um, you've got their ear. You know how to reach them. Uh, I assume you've got something a little bit more subtle than, say, sending in the National Guard uh, as if we could shoot our way out of whatever problems are going on in a place like Kenosha, Wisconsin, right? So, what what would be um, some policy points? What would be the approach that you would recommend? Well, first of all, everybody believes in equal rights. I believe in equal rights. And uh, uh, what's happening with the police officers, if you have 35,000 police officers in New York, and I'm referring to New York or Chicago, when you have that many police officers, surely maybe a half of 1% of them might not be as good as we'd like them to be. But by and large, the people of our inner cities want to dial 911 
they want to have the confidence that somebody's going to respond. And right now, uh, the police officers are not, they, they don't feel confident. I'll tell you what I advised the president a few weeks ago. I advised him that there should be a review board to review the actions of local district attorneys and uh, attorney generals, uh, maybe under the attorney general's office, um, and uh, review the actions of mayors. Uh, if it is wrong to to handcuff our police officers and not allow them to do their job. And that's what's going on. In these big cities, in these cities hey, of here, Seattle, hey, Portland, hang, on, hang on a sec. Hey, John Katsimatidis, hang, hang on, hang on a second. There's a video they're playing um, with your favorite mayor, Mayor De Blasio, seems to be the subject of an RNC video. Let's take a listen. I'm grateful for the spotlight that President Trump is putting on New York City public housing. I think it's wrong that the Democrats put illegal immigrants before Black Americans. How is it that we have people waiting on the waiting list for New York City public housing for 10 years or more, but yet we have illegal immigrants living here? Something is wrong with that picture. Since HUD came in with Lynn Patton as the regional director for HUD, it helped us identify some long systemic problems that we are now putting on the table and having discussions on. President Trump's administration have opened their ear and have listened. There's been improvement in public housing. We're very appreciative of this administration that has come and finally shined a light on what's going on and bringing real solutions to a real problem. Hello, my name is Ann Dorn. I'd like to introduce you to my husband, David. Father of five, brother of 12, grandfather of 10, friend to thousands. He was the most kind, dedicated. Okay, I am uh, talking with uh, John Katsimatidis. And so, um, look, Mr. Katsimatidis, if you look at, say, the unrest that's going on in, in Kenosha, Wisconsin, I don't know that they're going to mention it at all tonight. They've got a sort of a, a tight program that didn't necessarily anticipate this happening, but you saw the video that was there. Uh, you know what happened in the case of George Floyd, a $20 counterfeit bill. You've run a chain of grocery stores. You know that happens every day. They call the cops, the cop, the, the, the cop comes and kills a man, an unarmed man. Um, th that's why wrong. people are I, in the streets. I, I, it's me, me and you agree on that. That was wrong. But Black mm -hmm. Lives Matter doesn't care about the hundreds of black kids that have been killed in the last in in the in the last few weeks or the last few months. I mean, Black Lives Matter used that as an excuse, and it, it is wrong. We are going into our inner cities and allowing our kids to be killed, uh, Earl. And and uh, I worked for the police athletic league for 34 years. You know that. You know. I also respect. Uh, 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 all, all our inner cities. I was raised in Harlem, and I, you know, I I don't mind walking through Harlem and talking to those people. And those people deserve to be safe. Those people deserve when they call 911 that somebody responds to keep them safe. If you have a bad cop, have a bad cop. Get get rid of him. Do what you have to do with him. Mm -hmm. I agree 110 percent. Now the other thing with uh, with. Uh, our inner cities and uh, the HUD housing. I'm the one on my show, uh, uh, Earl, we fought. We fought hard to make sure that there's progress being made because those people living in those homes deserve better. They don't deserve to live in, in, in like a third world country, Earl. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, no question about it. In fact, we're going to hear from um, Ben Carson in just a minute, and we're going to bring that speech in its entirety. Um, the, the the video we just saw uh, referenced a lot of the problems in public housing. Uh, I think we're going to have a, an ongoing debate because these these issues have been around for a long, long time. There were issues when I was a kid. There were issues when you were a kid. There 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 are issues now. 
Um, would you agree with me, though, that the, the, these issues are kind of uh, different sides of the same coin? People obviously want police to respond when they call, but they don't want people to come and, you know, shoot a man seven times in his back while his children are right there. Uh, and, and the fact that it keeps happening over and over and over again suggests that we need a different approach and a different outlook somehow. I don't know if it gets solved at the federal level, but Earl, that's got to be part of the conversation, right? Earl, absolutely. There might be one, two, three, four, five, six mistakes in, in, in a year's time with police officers, and those people should be punished. But, but when you allow all these criminals on the street and you have hundreds and hundreds of inner city kids getting killed and inner city, uh, you know, people that deserve to be safe, that is much worse than, than the six uh, innocent guys that got killed by police officers, which is wrong. Mm -hmm. Is it, is, it, is it possible, um, John Katsimatidis, that uh, what we're going to hear tonight and where this debate is going to go between now and Election Day is going to be about whose side are you on, which is in some ways a matter of posturing, as opposed to how do we actually solve this problem, which is uh, it, it's much harder, is much more local, and doesn't lend itself to easy sound bites? I believe exactly. you want law and order in our streets, you want the criminals uh in 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 the jails now i am i ran as a liberal and you know this uh earl i don't mind if you let people out of rikers island that had an ounce of pot i don't mind but when you let people out of rikers island that had guns and knives and are terrorizing our citizens that is nonsense that is nonsense mm. earl Mm. Well, I mean, look, that, that's a, a New York discussion. You know, as you know, the problem was or the perceived problem that they tried to solve by amending the law is that they didn't stay because they were dangerous. They stayed because they didn't have, you know, two, 400 bucks to, to pay bail, which is, you know, just oh, kind of not fair. They, right. They, so you, they, you grab two guys no, who have a knife. Just, the guy who has some money in his back pocket goes home that night and the other guy stays in jail. It doesn't make any sense. But you can't throw all those people on the streets and terrorize our citizens. You know, it, 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 it's a joke going on right now. You can commit a crime at 9 o'clock in the morning, get a, not, never go to jail, get a, get a ticket, and commit another crime at, at noontime and another crime at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. I mean, yeah. people in the city of New York are terrorized. You know, there, there was a press conference tomorrow. 425,000 oh. city dwellers have hey, hold, moved to hold Suffolk that, County. Hold, hold that thought, John Katsimatidis. We've got, uh, we've got Ben Carson at the podium. Let's listen in. I'd like to 